Well, guys, I got a huge package from Italy from Paola Fregge. He sent me all these Euro cylinders because he knows these are hard for us to find in North America. He also sent a homemade training lock. Very nice. This is made on a nice core. This is a Kite Mark One Star. And it's hard to see, but this is a Yale, come on, baby, Yale Keyway. So a nice little lock, got the key, and inside of this little box, you got all kinds of replacement pins, replacement parts, and over here look like all handmade high security pins to keep challenging yourself. Someone, one of you lucky guys, is gonna win it at the end, along with probably a few of these. I've got the keys, we don't need no stinking keys. We're gonna pick these things, and I'm gonna pick them using the same tensioner and the same pick, just to keep things a little bit interesting. The rule is no lock can leave the, key, the lock lab until after it's suffered the humiliation of being picked. Let's do that. These are all on the Yale Keyway, Yale style anyway. Different sizes though, I saw one here, this little guy. So while it might be a Yale style, it's tiny. So I can't use my normal tensioner, I'm gonna have to use a compromise tensioner. So I'll use this medium thickness. I got it color coded white, and that'll fit kind of in, I hope, all of these. Uh, it's not gonna be ideal in a couple, but we make do with what we got. I'm also gonna use a compromised pick. This is my go-to pick for non-challenge locks. It's uh, the uh, Sparrows, one of the hybrid picks. Um, it's a good general purpose pick. It does the job as long as you don't have any real high cut pins. Should be pretty. Pretty good to go. This is an MG lock by the MG Motor Company in the United Kingdom, and no, that's not true, but it has a similar name, so these are usually found on closets and other low security applications, desk drawers, things like that. All right, let's see what we got. What I do when I have a, a standard lock is just put the tensioner in, slide my pick in, apply light tension, and then I just drag it out. I'm just dragging against the pin against the pins hoping to get a false set just like that one and <laughs> that is the ultimate false set so we're good there let's call that one done so he can leave the lock lab let's take a look at this this is a uni that's chinese for uno like multi unos all right only the chinese could come up with that name this one has a very strong uh, spring on the core and it's really gritty i can feel it through my finger so these are gonna, gonna, it'll be a balance between too much tension and not enough. So let's first slide the pick in. I'm gonna apply a good amount of tension, heavy I'd call it, and then just real quick drag this pick out. I'm hoping to bully it quite honestly. And if that doesn't work, I'll release it. And again, try the very minimum. I'm just gonna reach, get through the spring where it starts to bind and I'll try to rake it again to see what happens. So you, usually one of those works, you can get yourself a false set. If you can't, like I can't here, what I'm gonna do now, recock it, apply moderate tension, and go through and just pick it by hand, because these spring cores sometimes can be quite a challenge. Not this one, four pinner, pretty easy it felt like. All right, I've been holding off. <laughs> Anticipation is a spice of life. I've been wanting to grab this shiny one since I first saw it. This is a Corbin by Asa Abloy, usually pretty good locks. Um, usually also with security pins. So again, we've got a spring tension on the core, not nearly, not no grit, but not nearly as strong as that uni. All the way in, light tension, and then just kind of, oh my God. Did not expect it to be that easy, but there you go, the Corbin by Asa Abloy. That one's leaving the lock lab. Let's try this guy. Ah, this is a bullet named after the movie by Steve McQueen in celebration they produced a whole series of these high security cylinders not really all right light tension these are they find on desk drawers usually in Europe uh, light tension and see what we got some this is really everything's lining up today I'm gonna have to buy a lottery ticket and we got a huh, now it all comes to a screeching halt an Iseo this is no slouch these are nice locks uh, usually good tent, uh, good quality in terms of the um, the specs on it, and also we got security pins for sure. I'd be surprised if we can rake, rake up anything. If I get a fault set, I'll consider it to be a gift. All right, I'm going to give it a few chances because the secret to getting these picked is finding which one of the pins is the standard and it's not gonna give it to me. So recock all the way in, 
light tension and let's find a binder. There is pin 3. Got to click. Pin 2, got to click. Come on. There's got to be somebody else. All right, I'm going to recock this and try it again. This time I'm going to try it heavy tension. I'm going to force, there we go. It is pin two. I'm trying to force him to bind. I was having trouble if it was pin one or pin two. Maybe it's both. There we go, pin one, very high cut. Pin three. This will teach me not to screen the locks. There we go. I got a fault set going. That was pin four. Now I'm looking for any kind of counter rotation. And there it is. Pin three. Very slight counter rotation. Come on. Don't drop everything. There we go. All right out of here. What else we got? Oh, probably the other half of the training lock be my guess. This is probably the stock version of it though. Uh, six pinner. All right. This probably also will not give it, let us rake anything up, but I'm going to try it. And I got nothing. All right. No problem. Recock all the way in. Light tension. Find the binder. Pin three, got a click. Pin one, got a click. I do have a fault set, so I'm kind of looking for counter rotation, but the way those first two behave, okay, that was pin two. I got a second click and a little more turn on the core. That is further proof that this thing probably has serrated in it. Okay, I'm on pin four. I'm getting very slight counter rotation. I think you can see, see it there. And I think I just lost my fault set. We got it back. I'm having trouble finding the uh, the counter rotation though. There it is, pin six, all the way in the back, counter rotation. Come on, and there we go, out of here. All right, you know, I used to know the name of this before my brain damaging trip to Germany. Uh, this, those brain cells have long since been destroyed. This is the bent tip cigarette lock from the United Kingdom. Slide that right there, all the way in, light tension. Getting no love from this guy. Oops, and that tensioner is clearly not the right tensioner. I would love to use the red one. All right, not gonna work. Recock it, position it how I like it, all the way in. Real heavy tension, I'm gonna find a binder. Pin two. Come on, whoa, dang pin tensioner fell out again. I am not gonna compromise, we are using this tensioner. got to be all high cuts. There we go. Pin three. Got a little bit of a turn on the core. I felt it. That was four. 
and there we go. Woo! The tensioning was a hard, hard one thing on that one. All right. Ah, crap. Another Iseo. I got to learn to screen these locks. All right. Let's go through it again. All the way in, light tension. Let's see if we can rake something up. Ah! I felt some turn. Uh oh. Okay, that was pin three. This one acts like it's got a serrated in it. Okay, I'm getting counter rotation on three. And I lost the fault set. There, we got it back. Three is still set. That's good. I'm on four now. And we lost the fault set. All right, we got it back. Where are you? Four again. All right, I think I'm seeing a trend here. And the trend would be there's a lo there are two low cut pins in the front. Every time I set the one in the back, it oversets them. Here's four again. Yeah, and I'm oversetting. Oh, got it. I'll take it. I was going to say I'm oversetting them, but I angled them a little bit better that time. Anyway, out of here. Next one is a... Now, you know, if I was going to make a sleeper lock, if I was Paula, this would be it. No name, no serial number, only five pins. This probably has the nastiest stuff in the county. Probably a Chinese lock. All right, all the way in. Light tension and see what we can rake up here. Yeah, Paula, I know what you did here. This thing's full of threaded chambers. Got to be. I do have a fault set, so that's a good thing. Let's find the rest of it. Find that counter rotation. I can tell you they're all cut high. And I'm getting no counter rotation. I'm going to have to force this pick around the corner. It is on the very last pin back there. So let's force him. Yeah, I got a click. And there we go. I'll take it. All right, last one. A Thema. Never heard of it. Let's knock it out and get it out of here. And of course, the tension wrench will not grab in the bottom except like that. So, all the way in, light tension. Let's do some raking. Come on, Thema, give it up. Give it up quick. And of course, it won't. Oh, yes, it does. All right, I'll take it. All right, all of them done. 13 minutes and 27 seconds. Anyway, fellas, there you go. The winner of. Paula Frege's training lock, and I'm going to throw in a few of those as well, is right there. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Paula, thanks for the locks and this wonderful training lock. Going to go a long ways to furthering the lock sport uh, community. Thanks, guys.